Hey guys, you're back here with old Barry, and uh, a day ago Leanne forwarded a little video here that we got. Uh, we occasionally, we do a lot of, obviously we do a lot of research in uh, alternative medias because you're going to find truth a lot more. Now, of course, a lot of that's crap too, but uh, a lot of it is not. And it's very accurate. Now that's what brings this up. Leanne forwarded this video a few days ago to a friend of hers who's in the medical uh, profession, retired. She knows several people as do I in that. And uh, this particular person's out in Western Canada, but it has a good, uh, good review. It's a surgeon. Anyway, they uh, watched this first and they, uh, over the period of uh, the last couple of weeks, uh, Leanne's been forwarding some things here and there, and it caused, uh, caused them to start seeking their own information and start, uh, even though they're retiring, reach out to some of their former colleagues who are still in the workforce and uh, are now, without a doubt, uh, totally convinced this whole thing is a joke, which is what we've been trying to say forever. So it was just by passing out information like this that got people to open up their own eyes and do their own investigative work and that's all we're hoping. So what this person did was recommend to Leanne that um, we would get a lot more people uh, off of the YouTube channel to watch this than we would by just leaving it on the www.somethingfeelswrong.com blog so with that in mind, I'm going to go through it with you and uh, we're asking you for the sake of all humanity, please have a look. If you want more information of this uh, and really things where they're going, stay tuned to our YouTube, read our blog. Uh, if you want some other sources of what we feel is accurate information, feel free to reach me on an email and uh, I'll be glad to send you some links and send some things uh, but I do you know I do let you know in advance as I have many times and a long time going uh, we do also uh, we pay some serious dollars to some you know higher level private research as well but we'll always bring what we can learn without infringing anything in a copyright basis uh, to you okay so with that in mind let's Let's pay some careful attention to what I think is an excellent apophatically done survey from a very well-respected source, Stanford University. Okay, guys? So there was some big news today out of Stanford University. We have been waiting for the results of their antibody test. It'll be the first random sample antibody test done here locally in the United States, which is key for us knowing when it is safe for us to go back and resume normal life. We had a chance today to study some of the top line results of that survey, and we want to share with you right now what that study means for you and for your family and our country's fight against coronavirus. First, a couple of things about Stanford individually. Stanford is rated the number six overall university in the country, uh, according to the annual survey that is done by U.S. News and World Report. And that puts the Cardinal ahead of several Ivy League schools, Johns Hopkins, Caltech, and others. Notice how he emphasized John Hopkins, okay? Uh, weeks ago, we said J.H., his name would be appearing. Uh, we did answer who J.H. was. We had a lot of people. What do you mean J.H.? J. Who's a J. Who? Now, J.H. was John Hopkins. We, 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 because, you see, John Hopkins was the first university that immediately released this information, which was used on the basis of the lockdown, which a week after was already exposed of being completely wrong. Okay, the survey was done completely wrong. This whole lockdown was done on purpose for a different reason, but it was done through bad information. Okay, so continuing on, this is how you're going to do an apophatic search to find out the total number infected so you'll be able to do some simple math and get a realistic fatality figure, not an inflated one. Stanford is also rated the number four medical research institution in the country. So its credentials are globally recognized. You will not find better experts anywhere in America. 
Stanford set out recently to do the first random sample antibody test for SARS-2 coronavirus in the country in order to determine the virus's true infection and mortality rate, since most of the testing and data we currently have comes from the people in areas most immediately impacted by the virus, so we're constantly getting worst-case scenarios. Random sampling is necessary in order to produce a scientific survey that helps us to know how the virus may impact a community or country as a whole. The presence of antibodies means that a person has already been exposed to the virus and was never sick or recovered and is now immune. Either way, it's highly unlikely they can be infected or infect others any longer. One of the key it is vitally of important to know right there, how guys. widespread the SARS-2 coronavirus antibodies are Very in determining how soon we can return to normal life safely. The Stanford study weighted prevalence of antibodies in SARS-2 coronavirus in a sample of 3,330 people, adjusting for zip code, sex, race, ethnicity, etc. in Santa Clara County, California, just like you should for a scientific random sample called a serology test. Stanford found 2.49% to 4.16% of the people it randomly sampled had SARS-2 coronavirus antibodies. Santa Clara County has a population of 1.9 million people. Okay, if so the according, mean to what you're, according to what you're being told right now, those figures fall in line with what you're currently being told. And suggested by the Stanford study is 3.33%. It would mean just over 63,000 residents in Santa Clara County have or had COVID-19. But as of Friday, April 17th, According to the California Department of Health, only 1,833 people in Santa Clara County have confirmed positive for COVID-19. So based on the Stanford serology test, the true number of cases in Santa Clara County is 35 times greater than what has been confirmed through the Department of Health's COVID-19 testing. Further, the California Department of Health reports 70 people have perished due to COVID-19 in Santa Clara County. But the current inferred case fatality rate, that's 70 divided by 1,833, would sit at 3.8% of those who get the virus die. But based on the Stanford test, that case fatality rate plunges to just over 0.1%. That means the current inferred case fatality rate of COVID-19 in Santa Clara County is off by a factor of 38. This is the point we've been bringing out about many, many times I have, I have stated on my writing and in my previous videos that I can twist statistics and I've used it to my advantage throughout my life. Um, you know, in terms of I can make them read anything I want them to. I can tell you that, you know, my goodness, anybody that's looking for, uh, you know, full-time good employment right now, 88% have been finding it successfully. And that sounds pretty damn good, 88% out of 100. But if I flip that stat and say we're running at a 12% unemployment rate, it sounds terrible. And I basically said exactly the same number. This is what's being used against you. Understand the higher the number, they're using that to scare you. Just look at all the past articles about, oh, there's up to three, four million of undetected corona virus cases running around the world. Now, wait a minute, running around the, the city, there's two million more than we first thought. That actually helps because the death rate is a solid known number. The amount that has recovered is not. It's a variable. So the more people that had it and recovered would bring the death fatality percentage down, not up. So they use good news to even scare you. Remember, 12% not working versus the other way it was phrased, okay? It's really critical you understand this because um, all sorts of media, mainstream media, even alternative media has been using this against you for a long time. And uh, you've got to start catching on to this fact. If you extrapolate the mean prevalence of the Stanford study out to the rest of the country, again, using that mean number of 3.33%, 
it would mean nearly 11 million people in America have been infected with this virus. According to Johns Hopkins University, 33,398 people nationwide have perished. Well, with the Stanford infection rate, that would make the case fatality rate of the virus nationwide barely over 0.3%. Not 0.3% of the American people, but just 0.3% of those who have gotten the virus. Understand that. By comparison, last year's flu season, according to CDC, had a case fatality rate of 0.09%. So even the Stanford study confirms the SARS-2 coronavirus is deadlier than the flu, though not nearly as lethal as we originally feared when we shut down the country. To localize this study, let's take a look at my home state of Iowa. With a population of about 3 million people, a 3.33% prevalence mean or infection rate, which means 100,000 Iowans would have been infected, or 43 times higher than the reported confirmed cases of 2,332. According to the Iowa Department of Public Health, 64 Iowans have died from the disease. That would mean, according to the Stanford Serology Survey, the case fatality rate in my home state is only 0.06%. And again, that is not 0.06% of Iowans, but 0.06% of Iowans who have had the virus. This is a normal flu Conclusion. Season. Stanford, one of America's elite universities, is reporting the virus is somewhere between 50 to 85 times more infectious than we currently report, but 50 to 85 times less lethal than we feared based on the random sample's margin for error. This is very key to follow now. You see the point? That's what I'm saying. We didn't never figured out how this could spread so quickly and yet be so deadly at the same time. The curve just didn't make any sense in the beginning. Now, I am going to tell you something uh, that I'm hearing because I always like to be a little bit ahead of the game. I'm going to tell you now, one of our private uh, blogs that we pay to be members of, um, we're already fairly well sure in telling you this that uh, set it up in your electronic calendar just see if old Barry's right about this one the worst you're going to see of this particular strain of virus is not uh, 2021 but 2022 the flu season of 2022 again this is uh, um, you know coming from private sources that we pay for that type of information but uh, we want to stay ahead of the game too and their results have been nothing short of stellar spot on which is a big reason why we can be spot on five years ago with the gold the dollar yada 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 when everybody else is buying at the high selling at the low and doing everything at the wrong time but you know like i say this is key to understand this flu has been all over the place but for the most part nobody went in to get tested because it just gave them regular symptoms and in five days or seven days had subsided and they went back on to a normal life so it's, it's critical you understand this point here furthermore this lends credibility to my theory, based on research from CDC, that the SARS-2 coronavirus was already here wreaking havoc much of the flu pneumonia season because it's unlikely even that level of infection could happen in Santa Clara County just since mid-March. And if it has been I'm, here the whole we time, saying. the shutdowns were unnecessary to flatten the curve or slow the spread. Both of these efforts were futile because the horse had already left the barn. All we did was risk socioeconomic ruin after the fact. Mm -hmm. Finally, even if my theory of earlier infection is not true, at the very least, the Stanford survey confirms we are still short of herd immunity or the moment when so much of the population has been exposed and is now immune to an outbreak that you stop the contagion. We're actually delaying And there is no way for lockdown. us to achieve herd immunity under lockdown because we have kept too many of the healthy at home. Stanford's data confirms we must end these lockdowns immediately, either because it was already too late to stop the spread or we're making it worse by putting off achieving the herd immunity we need to get our way of life back. 
Thank you for watching this video. Please share it with as many and as often as you can over the next few days. This is the most important piece of data we have received in the battle against coronavirus yet. So that's the point, uh, guys. It doesn't do much good if you get something out of it, but you're not pushing it. And uh, you, you need to be pushing it to everybody, your family, your Facebook friends, everything you can. Because uh, the simple point of it is, if this type of information doesn't get out, we have got, um, we're already, we're already doomed. But now it's just going to get, it's how doomed are we? Uh, this economy has already been crashed. It was done on purpose to crash it. Uh, just, my goodness, six and a half million unemployment inquiries or registrations in under a week. Just in America alone, I'm not even talking about India. My goodness, the population there. I'm not even, countries that don't even have these kind of programs. People, this is so far beyond repair that those of you have not taken the time to study this and have not taken the time to actually do full apophatic research to determine where you are have left yourselves in a very vulnerable position. If you're depending on anything that is not in your hands, such as a 401, a retirement, a pension, uh, even things you left in banks, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to be very, very, very disappointed. And um, put that in the calendar about 2022. Uh, another thing, people like current things. I'm going out here on a limb from another uh, one of our private blogs that we uh, we uh, are deeply, deeply following. Uh, expect to see several banks in Europe. And anywhere from two weeks to a month start folding. I know that's a bold statement. Let's see if I'm right. I think a lot of the people in Europe won't have a problem agreeing with me. Our viewers in America and Canada might, but uh, for the most part, they just understand of a big planetary gear. They don't understand of all the gears are meshed and they're all spinning and uh, they're not even spinning in the same direction. That's why while some economies are going up, other economies are going down. It depends on which part of the gear train you're at. Uh, I expect over the while, uh, just to support some of the, the statements, I'm going to get deeper in, in, in uh, over, over as time permits. Again, I'm telling you, our plans have changed too, so I have to do a lot of things for my family as well. We're very comfortable in our timing, but I'm just saying our plan is from the late 1980s, so it's about as flexible on the fly as could be. But we're, we're making currently making some substantial changes to it as of the uh, lockdown because that intersection told us we had to make these changes. So as things go on, I'll release more that I can, but that's a big one. Uh, expect to see several banks starting to fold in Europe. All of our great subscribers that are holding U.S. dollars, though, don't panic. All you gold bugs, you're going to be wrong again like you always are, but that's going to do nothing but help the dollar because all of those people are flocking to the dollars and that's why they can print as much as they want for the next short while. That's why the people who don't understand and think it's the volume of money is what dictates what it's worth. That's why you guys are wrong all the time. That's why we're very well positioned and I'm proud of it. If I sound like it, that's fine. I'm not a wealthy man, but boy, have we positioned ourselves well. I have argued with some people and had discussions that have turned into arguments that are supporting some of the most prestigious eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. So eight and a half by 11 called a diploma, which you can pretty much wipe your ass with. And uh, they don't understand anything but basic Keynesian uh, economics. That's why they're wrong. The gold bugs are going to tell you again. The dollar's slashing down. Look what's happening right now. You better get into gold. Okay, well, two videos ago I said for the first time in a decade, I'm saying now might be the time. Okay, Not a decade ago, and all you people that are real proud have bought your silver at $30 or $25, and, and here it is a decade later and it's worth, what, 15 and change, like I said it would be. It's not me talking. I'm just relaying it to you guys. Okay, this is paid for high dollar information. So anybody who's smart and thinks they get valuable information for free, 
What you get on the internet for free is generally worth the price. Keep that in the back of your mind and it's the only reason why the mentors are right. We put our heads unbiasedly together and we're gathering information through four different people from different sources. Many of it, much of it paid information. Okay, we're just relaying it to you as a means of our way of helping humanity. I don't want to dwell on this, but my father taught me. My father was an orphan. I don't get into my private life, but he never knew his family from birth till death. Never knew his parents. But when he was raised in the orphanage, he always taught me that he said, Barry, knowledge that's not shared is wasted. Now, I know most people and business owners, they only want to keep their people so informed because they're worried about if they teach them or make them too good, they're going to branch out and be a, comp a competitor in the same industry. Well, the sad truth of it is, if they were going to do that, they're going to do it anyway. The fact is, knowledge that's not shared and then reshared, folks, is wasted. So you can stand by, you're under lockdown, you have very little rights left, very little freedoms. They will be very soon attacking your bank. Your pensions are at total risk over the next little while. You choose to believe, so you believe, okay, that's true or not. I don't care. I study and then I'm quite capable of making a hypothesis. And our hypothesis says mathematically it's impossible, so we don't really care what you believe. It's only trying to help you. We're not saying to take the advice. We're not saying not to. We're saying to start doing your own research. And if you're limiting it to what comes to you from outside sources, rather than you investing your time, remember time is a commodity. You save it, you invest it, you waste it, you spend it, okay? Start utilizing it to your advantage. I don't really care your wealth status right now because basically that's click, click, click. It's gone. So it's just as easy to do that in an electronic age, whether it's a couple of thousand dollars or whether it's a couple of million dollars. It doesn't matter. Um, we're going to get into other things uh, down the road too, but I just want you, uh, first of all, we took the person's advice. Uh, they didn't want their name mentioned about uh, one of the medical doctors, friends of uh, Leanne's sister uh, out in Western Canada. And uh, we're just taking their humble advice about Barry, put it out and please, hopefully good people will start spreading it because Really, the personal differences don't matter on this. Uh, there are certain things we're a collective, and there are certain things we are not. So basically, you live, uh, you know, in a pixel, but the universe is a picture, okay? So you have to understand everything's connected in this. I hope some good people will start forwarding this out to people they love and care for. Uh, remember, the universe is under no obligation to make sense to you. So if this doesn't make sense, try your best not to get hung up on it. Because when you have the dollars supporting you that you can control the media, basically five families control everything you see on a, on a mainstream media. Well, you're, you know, you're, you, it's a very powerful tool to go against. And uh, if you just look around, um, all I have to do is just say, look at the percentage of the people wearing masks. Now, if you understand where the truth is, where we and a greater momentum of people are starting to take notice of, you'll understand the people wearing masks, those are the ones, they're not bad people. They're not stupid people. They're, they're people who think they're doing the right thing, but they're ignorant people because they're ignoring available information. Okay, so anybody in a mask that tells you the people that do do you know your own seeking of information, keep that in your mind that that frequency doesn't make them bad or anything like that. It just makes them uninformed. Okay, let's get this out to as many that will listen, and the more we can do this, the softer the landing will be because already the mentors have discarded the two roots that we had. Uh, 
possibilities of uh, about a month ago almost now. Our own research has taken those two roots and, and, and has discarded them. It's now the degree of uh, severity on the landing and uh, we're preparing accordingly so we've adjusted our schedules a little bit and uh, we're only doing this to try to help everybody, okay? So there's no need to bash anybody, there's no need to praise anybody. Just distribute it and let people start thinking for themselves, okay? Until next time, it's Old Barry and DR. We'll talk to you soon.